Hey everyone, uh, I have just got back from seeing Avengers Endgame and my mind is absolutely spinning right now. This is going to be a spoiler filled video, so that is your spoiler warning because uh, I'm going to be talking about details that are in the film and looking at them from a, a physics perspective as well as perhaps some plot holes. I just want to emphasize though, I absolutely loved this movie. I had all of the emotions from laughing to being so tense to crying to everything. It is utterly amazing what Marvel has been able to do with the MCU uh, and props go out to the Russo brothers for directing this and Marcus and McFeely for writing what I think is the pinnacle of Marvel movies. I loved it but I did think of some things when watching the film that to me didn't quite make sense but as well as that, there are quite a few physics Easter eggs in there that got me thinking and I just want to talk a little bit about them. This is completely unstructured, not scripted, very unlike most of my other videos, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. And this is something that we can talk about in the comments below. So please do add your thoughts on, on what I say down there. Obviously, the main thing that's going to come up when you talk about physics in this film is going to be time travel. It's the big device in how to resolve Avengers Infinity War and the snap. And time travel is something that physicists, we, we still don't understand. I mean, I talked about this in the uh, Infinity Stones video I did, have a look there. We really don't understand how that works. Now, normally time travel is, is talked about in the context of general relativity. So Einstein's theory of the warping of space-time. And there are some solutions to general relativity where you can come up with uh, closed time loops. So I actually really like that in Avengers Endgame they go down a different route and talk about it in terms of quantum theory. Because there are ideas of, of trying to make time travel possible using quantum theory rather than general relativity as a, as a different way of doing this. Now these are entirely theoretical and we don't really understand whether time travel is in, in fact possible even in these quantum theories. In fact as we'll get on to in this video, we really just don't understand quantum mechanics fundamentally, like how we're supposed to understand it. But there are some really nice nods to elements of, of quantum mechanics uh, in the film. Well, as soon as Ant-Man shows up anyway. Because as you'll remember uh, from both Ant-Man films, the word quantum uh, is basically a get out phrase to, to do anything. It's the, the magic phrase that you can get away with stuff. But they do have some good physics in there, actually. The first thing I want to point out is Ant-Man's time spent in the quantum realm. Now, you know, obviously there is no real quantum realm, like a micro universe that's completely separate and has sort of weird space and time properties that are different from our own. However, Essentially all it means is that once you go down to scales that are of the order of atoms or subatomic, that reality becomes a bit weirder. And that, that's usually what we say about with quantum. So Ant-Man says that he only experienced like five hours in the quantum realm, whereas in our reality, it was five years. Now, this is something that could actually be possible. It's called the quantum Zeno effect. And it's something that I introduced for a video I did for the BBC when talking about uh, the weeping angels in Doctor Who. You can watch that up there. Essentially, you can have particles that almost feel no time. They're not allowed to evolve uh, in the way that they would do normally just by being constantly observed. Essentially, each observation resets them back to their initial state. And so they don't end up decaying as quickly as you think they should do. There are ideas that all manner of things can count as an observation. You don't necessarily need to have a conscious observer as per the Copenhagen interpretation. This is something known as decoherence. So basically just by having lots and lots of stuff around, you essentially get lots of observations, which then cause wave function collapse and, and, and can, can reset the clock in the quantum Zeno effect anyway. It's one of the ideas of essentially how we get something that seems so normal and reality-like from a theory that is essentially so weird at the small scales. So I think it's okay that time is experienced differently in the quantum realm as it is in the large scale. Of course, the other, the other reason why time would be experienced differently is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Now, we normally know that in terms of position and momentum. There's a trade-off between how well you know one and how well you know the other. 
And actually, it's not really how well you know, it's how well defined it actually is. You know, this is inherent to the particle itself. It's not just our ability to measure it. The converse is you have the energy and time uncertainty principle. One way that we see that is, is particles can pop in and out of existence. The, within a certain amount of time, you have an uncertainty in the energy, which means that you can have uh, states which you know, are on some sort of borrowed energy, virtual particles. You, you may have heard that antiparticles are the same as, as normal particles travel backwards in time. So a positron, which is the antiparticle of an electron, is essentially the same as one electron traveling backwards in time. And so there was an idea that there could only be one electron and it's just going backwards and forwards in time from the beginning of the universe to the end of the universe and backwards and forwards. You know, it's absolutely crazy. It doesn't necessarily mean it's real. And at the moment, we don't know whether there is one particularly real interpretation of quantum. Another thing that's mentioned uh, by Tony Stark once he's finally on board with the whole time travel thing is the EPR paradox. Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen. You get another sort of trade-off in quantum mechanics with this. You can have deterministic theories, you know, hidden variable theories, for instance. But if you have that, then you have to sacrifice um, either locality or causality. So locality is the idea that you can only be affected by the things that are immediately around you. For something far away to affect you, information needs to travel from there to you. So then obviously it becomes around you. And it's, it's intimately tied with causality as well. Nothing can travel as faster than the speed of light. So therefore, only things within your past light cone can influence you. EPR paradoxes is usually brought up in terms of uh, entangled particles. We know uh, entangled particles, spooky action at a distance, all that sort of stuff, are real. We've actually measured those effects and they, they come out exactly how quantum theory describes. So the only way to resolve EPR is, is, is either to accept quantum theory as non-deterministic, as a, a fundamentally probabilistic theory, or that you forego locality or causality. Potentially, time travel there because cause could actually come after effect. Now, obviously we don't really observe that in the real world, but we're going down into the quantum realm, the quantum scale. So, you know, maybe, maybe you could get away with that. One issue I have a problem with is how time travel actually works in the MCU. I was left scratching my head a little bit even though they, they try and talk about it and they make some fun about Back to the Future, you know, because Back to the Future was all about sort of alternate timelines. And yes, there is that snafu in the, in the second one when they're able to go back to the past future, but it's about branching timelines. And they say, no, 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 you can't change the past. Everything happened, happened. So, so essentially they're trying to create a closed loop of events. That seems to be what I got from it. I mean, there was a lot of fast talking, you know, it's, Robert Downey Jr. So I, I missed a few of the details, but that seemed to be the gist that they were going for before embarking on this mission, this end game. Except then there's a lot of inconsistencies with what actually went on when they did travel in time because events did not play out exactly as we saw them in the movies. I'd been absolutely fine if they were able to do things in hiding in scenes that we'd already seen, but not affect those results. But they fundamentally changed things that happen you know, like Loki stole the Tesseract back and warped out of there. And Thanos traveled to the future and got dusted in the future. So did he ever go back? So then does he exist in the past and then all the way leading up through to Infinity War? It doesn't really make sense. Like, I feel like they weren't necessarily consistent with their rules on how time travel worked. Also, I'm a little uncertain as to all of the people who came back, have they aged? Because this is five years after Infinity War, right? But Peter Parker looked the same age, so he looked like he's in high school, he went back to high school. So all those people who were in high school before, you know, they've aged five years, they probably, a lot of them will, will have graduated, right? But it seemed like at least Ned was still there. So is it just gonna be the case that it just so happened that all of Peter Parker's friends uh, were dusted as well, and they're, they're back in the same year, or 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 what? I, I didn't I didn't really get that. So they are some niggling points, but really that's just because time travel in fiction is is hard uh, to get right because you can have all of these paradoxes, these inconsistencies, and that's why, as I said in my Infinity Stones video, is that there's ideas that time travel isn't possible. 
the chronology protection conjecture. So there you have it. That's just some quick thoughts on a, a bit of physics uh, that was in Avengers Endgame and, and what I think maybe some, some plot holes due to time travel, but also you know, some nice physics Easter eggs. So I hope you, you enjoyed Avengers Endgame as much as I did, or even more, if that's even possible. Uh, do let me know in the comments what you thought about it. And if you've got any thoughts on any of the points that I raised about the movie, let's have a discussion. All right. See you next time.